Today I'm going to explain how I made and installed the acoustic treatment for the studio. This is the third video in my studio build series and if you're new to the channel it's great to have you here. To celebrate the completion of the studio I'm currently running a giveaway with FL Studio. We have three copies of the software to give away and I am also adding in a 30 minute zoom call with myself to talk about anything and everything to do with music. The link and everything else that you need to enter the giveaway is down below and I wish you the best of luck. Oh and thank you very much for a thousand subscribers. It's been wonderful hearing from all of you and I'm really excited to see the channel and this community continue to grow. These acoustic panels have a very simple design and are very cost effective, but they produce a really high quality result and I'm very happy with how stylish they look too. The accuracy that I can work with has skyrocketed, especially compared to the old duvets and pillows in the bedroom setup. So if you're thinking about doing something like this yourself, then I really hope that this video can serve as the inspiration to just go for it. There are some great videos already online going into a lot of depth about the science and the optimization of acoustic panel design and placement and really high quality software that can get an accurate accurate reading of how your room sounds and of course the more accurate and tailored your treatment is the better the results you're going to get. But in this video I just want to dive into how to make the panels and the most important basics that will get you a long way to having a really high quality sounding room. Along with some of the best tips and tricks that I have found over time. And when I can get my hands on some more of the high tech stuff you'll be the first to know. If you have any other questions about this just leave them in the comments below or send me a message on my Instagram and if you find this video valuable then please feel free to like, subscribe and share. I post these videos as often as I can and I aim to be the source of inspiration and information that I wish that I had when I started creating as an artist. We got lots of rock wool insulation when we built the studio because I knew I would use it for both the walls and the panels. And put very simply, that is what the acoustic panel essentially is, is a highly absorbing material that you then decorate to your taste and strategically place in the best positions in your room. We used RW45 for most of the walls in the studio but I used RW6 for the acoustic panels, it just has a slightly higher density so it's a little easier to work with because it's not floppy and it's commonly used as acoustic treatment all across the world. This type of treatment will serve you a lot better than using acoustic foam panels like these as they're likely to give you a more balanced overall sound by absorbing a larger range of frequencies in the spectrum. Essentially these bad boys are going to give you much more control over the reverberations in your room than the cheap acoustic foam ever will and if you get loads of the cheap acoustic foam you can actually end up probably doing more harm than good because you end up with a really unbalanced frequency response in your room. Although overall, any treatment is much better than working in a crazy reverby cave. One of the main goals when creating these panels was to work with what I had, and after having built the studio, I had a lot of leftover wood from the sarking on the outside, so I decided to use that to make the frames for the panels. The dimensions of the frames were totally relative to the room and the space that I had available, although when making the larger panels to go on the back wall, I tailored it so that it would fit the dimensions of the width of the insulation to minimize the amount of cutting I needed to do. Ideally, you wanna be working on a nice flat and smooth surface so that you can get a flush finish at the edges for when you then pull the fabric over. For this design, you don't actually see these frames when they're finished, but you want them to be as square and as strong as possible. I also used some angle brackets in the corners if I needed them, especially for the larger ones. We got some really high quality screws when we were making the studio, so I could use these to make the panels also and avoid splitting the wood because it's relatively thin. But it also meant that it's easier to take them apart and adjust them if I need to, rather than using nails or staples. Then on to the fabric, which would be stretched around the frames that I had just made. One of the hacks that I decided to go for with this one was just buying bed sheets. Often materials could go upwards of 20 to 30 pounds per square meter, which would be ridiculous for the amount that I would need. These bed sheets were of course thinner and lower quality than the expensive fabrics and I ended up doubling up the layers but the finish I ended up with was really high quality and they would come in at about £3 per square meter so to double it up would lead to it still being about five times cheaper than a lot of the other fabrics out there. I went for a light grey as I found it was one of the most neutral colours and very versatile. I went through the process of ironing the sheets just to get that extra silky smooth finish. I would then just cut the fabric to size and use this special ripping method to try and get everything done quickly. As I went along through the process, everything gradually got faster as I got used to the techniques. It was then time to start stapling that fabric onto the frames that I'd made. One of the benefits of doubling up the layers is that you don't have to be an absolute perfectionist with the first layer, you just need to get it on evenly. 
I find it best to start lying it flat, stapling the four corners and then adding the rest of the staples around as you go, making sure not to stretch the fabric too much and ending up with an uneven finish. Because of this design, I would be putting a thicker and longer plank on the outside, so the stapling really didn't need to be a work of art, I just had to make sure that that front surface looked nice and clean. To fit the wood on the outside and the insulation on the inside, the measuring was really important. By making the insulation slightly bigger, it meant that it would squeeze in and hold itself in place, especially with the more dense insulation. And then the wood to go on the front, I had to cut really accurately so that I would get nice clean corners. This took quite a bit of trial and error, particularly for the base traps because of needing to cut them at an angle to fit in against the wall. By designing the panels like this, I had a nice air gap in between the insulation and the wood on the outside, which would also just serve for more effective sound absorption. It also meant that when it came to hanging the panels on the wall, I had space to work with so that I could mount them on top of a piece of wood that I would drill into the wall. For making the base traps, it was really helpful to have the miter saw to make cutting a 45 degree angle into the panels much easier and quicker. For the frame of the base traps, I put a piece of wood in the middle just to make them stronger and easier to work with. And they also just rest on the floor. Not everything went smoothly, but I was really happy when things were all working. I was kind of unsure as to how everything was gonna turn out, but was really happy with the final result. And I'm glad that I spent the time trying to get the corners and edges all to line up very well and was careful with how I screwed everything in so that it looked nice and clean. If you have some spare sheets lying around, then you can cover up the insulation at the back if you really want to be clean and tidy with it. And again, that doesn't have to be a work of art. I then just took some leftover wall stud wood from the studio build and screwed that into the wall that would then be used to screw the top piece of wood and hold it in place. Because of the gap between the insulation and the wood, and the insulation being 10 centimeters deep, and the wood being 14.5 centimeters deep, you can actually just rest this top plank of wood on that wood, and the screw is just to fasten it into place. When making the roof and ceiling of the studio, I decided I wanted to leave the joists exposed, as this would leave me with something to work with when attaching things to it, like this ceiling cloud. I just put two thick planks of wood up there that I could then screw the outside planks of wood into. This also left a nice air gap between the panel and the ceiling, which also apparently helps with the acoustics. It fastens on so strong that I can actually be a cheeky monkey and hang from it with no worry of it coming off. The placement of all the panels was geared around optimizing my main listening position. So I had the ceiling cloud directly above me, then placed panels in the first reflection points on either wall, base traps in all four corners, and larger panels on the back wall, which helps for both recording and mixing. Having the outside lining of wood looks great, and it also serves as a cheeky little shelf if I need it. The last thing, and clearly the most important thing that I did was installed some LED lights to the back of my desk and two of the panels on the side walls. When attaching the panels to the wooden block support that I screwed into the wall, I made sure that I would keep a decent distance between the panel and the wall. This helps with acoustics, but it also meant that I would have good space for the LEDs to shine without creating bright spots, giving a nice clean color all the way around. I also then used two small screws to make sure that I maintained that gap between the top and the bottom. I just ordered the LEDs myself off of Amazon and I'll link them below along with all the other materials I used. And I ordered my own corner cutters and different connectors so that I could get them cut to the right size and looking nice and clean. This was really fiddly, but it was worth it. I was originally planning to do all of the acoustic panels this way, but I decided actually that I kind of like the more minimalistic approach and not going over the top with lighting because I prefer to just have a simple yet still inspiring environment, but one that's not distracting and I can just dive into my work. For the windows and door, I have blinds that I can take up and down whenever I need to, and I also put a coat hanger on the door so that I can hang coats and jackets there, especially if I were doing a recording session. One of my favorite sound absorbers, and is also actually the studio manager, is Mr. Monkey, and that's the only name I've got for him in the moment. I've had him for all these years, but I don't actually know what he's called, so if you guys want to suggest some names for him, then just leave them down below and I'll pick the best one. The sofa also goes a long way to absorbing sound along with blankets and having extra blankets around the studio is actually very helpful. There's a lot of practical uses for having blankets lying around and it also just makes it a more enjoyable environment to listen in. I also have some carpets and a nice thick rug on the floor because the floor can also be overlooked as to how many frequencies it might bounce back. One of the reasons we went mostly for wood in the studio is because it seems to have nice acoustic qualities and we went for tongue and groove on both of the side walls because it will also naturally do a little bit of diffusion to some of the frequencies. Though I do hope to get or make some diffusers in the future, but only when I can specifically tailor them to my room by using referencing technology and working out the right frequencies to diffuse.
The cost for each panel will obviously depend upon the size, ranging from around £10 for the smallest panels up to about £25 for the base traps. This depends a lot upon the cost of wood. The wood in these is treated pine, which we got a great price for from the local timber merchant. The whole room would have cost around £200 to treat from top to bottom. I really hope you found this valuable, and if you did, feel free to click subscribe, share, like, comment, all of those wonderful things. And if you have any questions, send me a message on my Instagram. I would love to hear from you. I really look forward to sharing the next video with you, and you can click on one of those just now, but until then, bye. But I can't help